Hello, um, I'm Black White News, and yes, this is another deportation video. And people say, oh, why do you always worry about deportation? Are you worried about getting deported? No, I'm not. I just like to highlight what can happen to people. And I, Librans, I always favour the underdog. And in this particular situation, it was recorded or reported by The Guardian. And it's about a Portuguese gentleman. He's been living in the UK legally since 2001. He's been working and he's working for, I think it was a plumbing company. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, he was, he's from the EU and um, he didn't, it's a hard, well, it's not a hard one, but he's, he doesn't speak English very well. And this was before Boris Johnson kind of really stepped up the pace with the immigration policy and said, look, now we're going to have the brightest and the best. You have to be able to read and write, read and write. You need to know the basic, you need to have the basic knowledge of English. You need to be able to speak English. You need to have a certain level of intelligence. You need to have a certain um, amount of money and you need to have a certain caliber. You need to be of a certain caliber and uh, with regard to kind of jobs, engineering and all of that stuff. And he was, this all went under the umbrella of the brightest and the best. When you've got people like that, you don't have to worry on whether or not they've got proper equipment, whether or not they can read and write, because that kind of negates all of that. That kind of um, screens them all out. Anyway, this gentleman, Mr. De Silva, he came before all of that because he came in 2001 and the brightest and best immigration policy overhaul didn't come out until 2019. So this guy, he can't, he speaks Portuguese, very, very little English, and he's not au fait with um, electronic equipment or technology. Um, when he was trying to fill up the application form, he had one of these old computers, so he couldn't upload his ID. And this thing lingered on and lingered on and lingered on until it, he, he missed the deadline. The, mid, the deadline, I think, was 2020, but they were allowing late applications at their discretion. This is the Home Office. And he finally got somebody to help him with the application, I think, last year sometime so the application goes through it's rejected for whatever reason i don't know if it's rejected because it was late application or whether it was not completed properly apparently there were 9470 invalid applications in august 2023 and 13930 valid invalid applications in September and it could have been for the same reason if they're invalid they then can't stay in the country they get rejected the application is rejected they can be fined they can be deported and so this Mr De Silva he's concerned because it looks like he's up for deportation now he's got solicitors on the case and stuff like that but my um, question to you is when somebody comes into the country they're legal at the time, because remember, this is pre-Brexit and all of that kind of stuff. So they're legally in the country and it's come in by EU. Um, he hasn't learned the language and you might well say, look, you've been in the country long enough. You've been in the country, you know, over 20 years. Why don't you speak English? Why haven't you learned the language? Why haven't you acquainted yourself with education, with new equipment, with new technology? Why have you been living in this country for so long and you don't know, you don't know how to complete a form properly? Could argue that point. But, okay, supposing you don't have the support mechanisms, you don't have the guidance, you don't have the people. Anyway, a lot of reasons can, uh, there can be a lot of reasons why somebody's in the country they cannot read, they are too embarrassed to go and learn to read and write as adults, you'll find a lot of adults, you wouldn't know that they can't read and write until a circumstance like this, because 
well, I think he's a bit different because he can't even speak the language. But you have people who can speak the language, getting on with their lives, and you'd think, oh, yeah, you know, they're really intelligent, can hold a good conversation. They can interact, they can socialise, they can do everything. But they can't read and write. And you'll find a lot of people do that. And now, with all this new technology and this digital platform, a lot of them are being found out. So... I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. But do you think he should be deported based on that? The fact that he's legally in the country, he's not illegal. He's not illegal. He's been paying his taxes. He's been doing everything the right way. He's got no criminal record. His, his um, fault or his disadvantage is that he doesn't speak English very well. And he's not au fait with technology, which has meant that he didn't know how to complete the documents and he couldn't understand it and he didn't have any support mechanisms to help him. And even though support mechanisms are there, like I said, adults who cannot read and write are really embarrassed to admit that. And they, come, they can come over as quite bolshy or they can come over as overconfident to hide the fact that they cannot read and write. And you'll normally find that people who cannot read and write are very kind of arrogant and very, um, like I say, bullshit. Because they're trying to make out, like, you know, to, to, to deflect. And you, so you wouldn't even know. I remember I knew somebody when I was living in America. And I didn't know that person couldn't read and write. The only time I found out he couldn't read was we were watching something on television and I hadn't got my contact lens or my glasses. So I said to him, can you read the subtitle? Can you read those subtitles for me? Because I, I can't see it. And that is the only time he admitted that he couldn't read it. But I wouldn't have known by communicating. So to t somebody who can't read and write be penalised. When you're thinking about this um, technology and digital platforms and how do people who have um, kind of missed out for whatever reason, whether it's poverty, whatever the reason, who've missed out on education, how do they catch up as adults? Now, you could say now, these days, there's no excuse. You can learn via YouTube, you can go online, You've got no excuse not to um, be able to read and write. But learning English is not easy. It's, e it's easy for us who are born here. It's easy for us who, you know, who are half intelligent, you know, and but trying to learn a new language and writing it is very difficult as an adult. So um, I think I've said nearly everything I wanted to say. Yeah, he could be fined, imprisoned or banned from the UK. And yeah, so basically my question to you is, should the UK only be open to the brightest and the best, which are those who speak good English, pass that English language test, those who, of course, have no criminal record, but those who are um, of a certain calibre, they can only do certain jobs, what they call the shortage occupations, um, engineering, science, science, architects, those kind of things. Or should it be open to people who might not be able to speak the language, but who are solid citizens, who will work hard, who are willing to go the extra mile, but who don't have the language skills, the communication skills. The only thing with that is that it can put them in a precarious situation because he called the Home Office. They couldn't understand one word he was saying. They just kind of said look we can't be bothered with this application because we can't we, we don't understand him and i don't know if he could have got somebody to speak on his behalf but either way it's gone tits up for him so what do you think do you think he should be deported or do you think he should be given a second chance let me know your views i'm black bright news